Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is William Schimmel. I'm the Executive Director and CEO of PTCB. Uh, joining us today are Scott Myers, the Executive Vice President and CEO of the Illinois Council for Health System Pharmacists, and Larry Wagoneck, the CEO of the Michigan Pharmacists Association. Scott and Larry have been on the Board of Governors for PTCB since we were born back in 1995. The reason for that is both of their organizations had pharmacy technician certification exams uh, well before there was a PTCB. So we're going to learn a little bit today about how those tests were born and also kind of the, the history of PTCB. So maybe to get us started, were you, Scott and Larry, were you already the execs of your respective organizations when these uh, pharmacy technician certification exams were born? Well, in, in, in Michigan's case, no. I was on staff uh, when they uh, started the testing. Back in 1983, they had developed the test questions and, and some, some of those activities. And I think it was 1984, 1985 that testing uh, first started uh, in, in Michigan. I was, I was actually president of ICHP when ICHP began its testing in 1988. So Michigan was the first out of the box. As a matter of fact, we even looked at the Michigan exam before we started our own test. Then we we began testing in 1988. I became the executive director in 1992. And right after I got into this position, I made a phone call to Larry and said, hey, I got some news. We need to get together. Yeah, so you, you hinted that, Scott, you had, you know, contacted Larry and you said you wanted to talk about this. There's a there's a famous meeting we talk about sometimes that happened at a, a bar in South Bend, Indiana. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. I called Larry only because um, I got his name and phone number from the Illinois Pharmacist Association exec at the time. And um, I had gotten a message or actually I had a verbal conversation with Bill Zelmer at ASHP that said, he, he had told me that ASHP and APHA had finally decided that it was time to get involved in technician certification. This was in 1992. So uh, I called Larry and I said, where do you wanna meet? Because it looks like it's gonna happen and if we don't get involved first together, then we may, we may get left out. And halfway between Michigan and Illinois is Indiana and where, but, South Bend, Indiana, the home of Notre Dame. We decided to meet in that because then it was neutral territory for both of us. And uh, so we found a Holiday Inn that had a, the bar was called the Gippers. And uh, we thought that was, that was probably as neutral as we could get. Obviously our, our discussion uh, went, started out as far as getting to know each other. Um, obviously we knew Illinois had an exam and the Illinois Council knew that we had an exam and, and uh, uh, we then started talking about what it might look like, uh, what could happen, kind of long-term uh, strategies and, and ideas that each of our organizations had. Uh, so that, I think you may have answered this question then. So it sounds like maybe Scott, you might've made the first call, but did you know each other at all before this, before no. that call? No, we didn't uh, didn't know each other, but it didn't. I mean, even that first meeting, we felt real comfortable. I think from the Illinois side, that the Michigan folks were ready to collaborate on this. It was interesting. By 1992, we had between Michigan and Illinois had 26 states and all the branches of the military using our exams, either Michigan's or Illinois's. And in several of the states, that was also part of the reason to get together was we were actually competing. And because our test was from the Illinois Council of, at that time, hospital pharmacists, and Larry's uh, test was from the Michigan Pharmacists Association, it was perceived that Michigan was the community test and Illinois was the hospital test. But both of them really were testing for both community hospital across the board. So it just, it really felt right. It was a, a very productive meeting, I think. It was really just trying to figure out, did everyone have a similar vision or idea of what it could be or should be? And uh, I think as Scott identified between the Michigan and Illinois council meeting that we had, yeah, we had very similar ideas of, of what it should be, what it could be. Uh, laying, laying the groundwork uh, for that particular meeting was actually a lot of policy work that ASHP had done 
and APHA had done as well in trying to recognize the role of the pharmacy technician. I want to talk a little bit about the Certification Council. Obviously, it's critical. Um, the Certification Council is a group of actual practitioners, pharmacists, and technicians. Um, especially in those early days, they looked at the content of the test, the questions, you know, what, what are we actually going to make this test on? Can you talk about the, how it was first formed? Like, how did you find the people? When was it? When we first put the certification council together, we had a couple of reasons to do it. One, the members of the board of governors were not testing experts and, and had not been, you know, working on the front lines of pharmacy for a while. And so we needed people that, that were in the day-to-day -day trenches. The second part was that we really tried to make the certification council representative of the practice with one member from each of the organizations to uh, kind of represent the, the stakeholders that way. And then we decided eventually that that certification council would be expanded a little bit. It wouldn't necessarily represent the organizations anymore because PTCB was its own entity. So does that sound right, Larry? Yeah, I think that's that's right on target, Scott. Uh, I think the other part, Bill, is that, you know, the Certification Council, we, we wanted to separate out the, the process of the test and monitoring and, and kind of pulling together the test from the Board of Governor activities so that, that there be an arm's length away of the, of the Board of Governors with with actual individuals who are making the decisions based on what the profession needed. Right. Yeah. Can you talk about the role of state pharmacy associations and societies, especially back at the beginning? Yeah, I, I'd be happy to jump in. Um, as Scott identified early on, there were 20 some states that had uh, involved either Michigan or the Illinois Council's uh, exam. And in many of those states, they were uh, the, the state society was separate from the pharmacists associations. The state associations were absolutely vital and critical. They, in fact, were the ones that that did the actual testing. Now, we this was back before we have the online testing like uh, like is available now. Uh, so it was paper pencil. Uh, we had developed uh, uh, testing procedures, uh, and so the the states were responsible for conducting. Uh, the exams that we did. Uh, so in the early, early days, it actually was the state associations that were encouraging their pharmacist members to have their technicians certified. And and because there was a need for it, uh, we saw this grow in, in a variety of different states. To, to be honest, I think even now, the states play a huge role when it comes down to um, acceptance of the exam and licensing or registration of technicians and so forth. Uh, that whole process still hinges a lot on those state affiliates. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the, the states continue to play that really, really big role, especially now, even as PTCB's programs have expanded, right? You know, we've begun these uh, assessment-based certificate programs. Within a few months from now, we're going to have our first uh, CPHT advance. We're very excited about that. So yes, the states are, are continuing to play a really important role and we're happy to have them. So looking back, you know, uh, trying to capture your mindset in the early to mid nineties, did you ever think PTCB would be as successful um, from a mission perspective as it is now? Well, I kind of hoped it would, but I didn't really, you know, I didn't expect it to take off like it did. But I think the most important thing is the fact that PTCB has certified over 700,000 pharmacy technicians it tells you that there is an awful large demand for this and um, that as we move forward, I think we're going to see the turnover decrease more and more with technicians as it becomes. And I think PTCB has helped it become a career and not just a job until I find something better. I guess my response is yes, I, I think uh, it, it has not surprised me. And I would say it's probably turned out uh, better than I expected and faster than I expected, similar to Scott, as far as timing goes. But am I surprised by it? No. Um, you know, looking back, I've been very proud of what PTCB has done. I think that, uh, you know, the staff at PTCB uh, from the very beginning have, have truly had the interests of, of both pharmacists and pharmacy technicians at heart as, as we were going down the, the various pathways and trying to, to do this. 
Great. Thank you. I think you covered several of my, uh, my other nostalgia or 25 years questions, but if you had to, I mean, what would you consider kind of the greatest accomplishment across the last 25 years for PTCD? I, I personally think, you know, the, the 700,000 plus certified technicians, the rec recognition of PTCB around the, the country as uh, the leader with within pharmacy vi or pharmacy technician vision, um, you know how how technicians can be utilized and and how they should be utilized. Yeah, I I echo Scott's uh, probably the the greatest accomplishment I think is the number of pharmacy technicians that have been certified. Um, I think that also the um, the quality and the standardization for pharmacy technicians coming into working in pharmacy. Yeah, I would echo what you both said. As uh, someone who more recently joined, obviously I was not there at the beginning, but uh, I think there was definitely something visionary about PTCB's creation and, and it put into place this really critical uh, way to, to recognize technicians for all the work they do. So one of the reasons we wanted to talk to the two of you, obviously, is that it, it seems it's time for your retirement. Um, after you know so many years of dedicated uh, work for PTCD and for your own organizations, you're you're both you know uh, almost at retirement. So Sir, tell us, what are your plans? Uh, are you going to stay involved in pharmacy at all, or um, will it be you know fishing and golf? I'll, I'll I'll defer to Scott because he's retiring before me. So then then uh, I'll respond after him. Well, uh, Bill, it, it definitely will involve a lot more golf than uh, I've uh, played lately. I certainly intend to stay involved in ICHP as a volunteer, which uh, probably is to the chagrin of the staff here. They'll go, oh, he's going to be he's going to be bothering us for the re for another couple of years. Yeah, and Bill, I'm I'm retiring in January after it'll be 37 years at the association. My intent is I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. Uh, like like Scott, uh, I too am going to be remain a member with the Michigan Pharmacists Association, and uh, uh, will be volunteering to uh, assist them in in some ways. I currently am involved with the Michigan Health Information Network, which is the state designated entity that that deals with the exchange of health information. So I serve as chairman of the board and I'll be continuing on uh, with them. So I'll be involved with healthcare in, in some way, shape or form. Uh, but beyond that, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. And then, you know, what do you see um, as the future, right? Uh, of PTCB, of pharmacy technicians, what's your best, uh, your best forecast of where things are going? I guess in, in my crystal ball, Bill, I, I think pharmacy technicians are gonna be more and more important. Um, I think that uh, we will see much of the dis traditional dispensing function uh, will eventually uh, move on to uh, advanced trained pharmacy technicians. I see that happening um, uh, probably faster than some pharmacists may like it to occur. Although uh, the, one of the challenges that pharmacists will have and have had is really um, maximizing the use of their pharmacy technician. Yeah, Bill, I think that um, my vision of the future of PTCB is to, one, continue moving in the direction that it has, especially in the last couple of years with the added credentials. I think that um, as PTCB gets very good at um, providing those credentials and at, at making sure that they're solid credentials, the states are going to continue to depend on those credentials from PTCB as, as uh, criteria or standards to be met for these technicians to take on new responsibilities. Yeah, Bill, I just to add on, I think that, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I think PTCB has been very responsive to and responsive to what the profession thinks. And so, you know, um, in some of the early days when we were doing things and um, we would pull together the variety of individuals from different practice areas and really talk about what do you see, what do you want, what do you need? And that's what, what actually developed some of the, some of the future roadmaps that we, that we went down. And I see PTCB continuing that. And so hopefully after, after Scott and I leave, the future certification council, the future board of governors, 
we'll continue that uh, that inquiry out to the profession of what do you want, what do you need, where do you want to go, and and then be responsive to those particular needs. A big thank you, obviously, from from PTCB. Um, that's a lot of years uh, and and some vision at the beginning that really kind of got us here. So thank you to both of you. Yeah, and on that note, I mean, I can pledge, you know, for myself and on behalf of the staff that we will do our best not to screw up what you started. <laughs>